So if you're planning on studying architecture or maybe thinking of getting a job in the field, there's about a 99% chance that you're gonna stumble across a boss that you're just not gonna like. You're probably even gonna hate this person. And this boss could be the owner, they could be a project manager, they could be a partner, they could be even a job captain. And this is something that I've gone through a few times in my career that I just meet these people that have these certain qualities and I just don't get along with them. It just adds more stress to my job for no reason and it just feels like I can't do any of that work. And so first I wanna tell you what these qualities are so that if the person that you're not getting along with has multiple of these qualities, chances are that they're not a good boss or a good manager. And then after we go over that, I wanna to talk to you about what should you do in these scenarios, right? Now, the first quality that I wanna point out is micromanaging, right? This basically means that the person that's assigning you the tasks is on top of you for the majority of the time, making sure that you're doing it right. Now, it's okay for the owner or the manager to wanna make sure that you're doing things right, but in my opinion, there's a better way to do that than to actually being on top of you every minute, making sure that you're doing things right. For example, they can assign you a task, and at the end of the day, review it with you, tell you what you did right, tell you what you did wrong, and then go on from there. But when a micromanager is in the office, what they do is they're constantly hovering on behind you, and they're watching you work, and they, if they see something that they don't like, they'll tell you, no, 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 don't do that. And they won't really give you a reason why. They're just telling you not to do things. They make you feel stressed out and they don't make you feel like you're willing to learn or ask for help. So if you think that your boss is a micromanager, then this is a big red flag. The next really negative quality that these bad bosses have is the fact that they have a short temper. Now, it's okay to get frustrated. Architecture can be frustrated. If there's something going on with a client or something like that behind the scenes that you as an employee are not aware of, you know, it is okay for them to get mad and get frustrated and sometimes take it out on you like it's normal, right? If they apologize after or if it's something that doesn't happen too often, then that's good. But if there's someone that are constantly throwing fits around, making you feel bad for the mistakes that you're doing, that is not normal right? Most of the good managers and the good bosses that I've worked with in the past do not make you feel afraid of making mistakes. They actually encourage it as long as you learn from them, right? Because if you make a mistake and it's obviously if it's something that's careless, well, I mean, that's on you. But if it's something that you really didn't know, you were using your best judgment and a mistake was made, then that's not your fault. And this is a great opportunity to, to learn. But a lot of these crappy bosses, they tend to make you feel really bad. And that's because they're going through something, whether it's some sort of trauma that they have or some need for power. I don't really know what it is, but if you feel that your boss or your manager is constantly throwing fits for no reason, getting mad at you for things that you're not doing right, that's a big red flag. Because like I mentioned, if it happens every once in a while, sure, that's okay. But if it's a personality trait, I'm telling you, that's a huge red flag. Another red flag that is actually really difficult to pick up is the fact that your manager is assigning you a lot of tasks. Now, this could actually be a good thing, right? If your boss is interested in having you learn, they might actually test your limits by giving you a lot of work or giving you work that you're not comfortable with doing because they really want you to learn. But I think that if that's the case, they should have a conversation with you and let you know, hey, we're gonna go ahead and give you more tasks in these areas because I really want you to learn these things. I feel like that type of communication is not a red flag. I think that the red flag comes in when they're constantly giving you work and it's not stuff that you even enjoy. You see, because like I think that a good boss has that communication with their employees, asking them, what is it that they're interested? What do they like doing? And what would they like to learn? A good boss asks these questions from their employees. If they're not asking these kind of questions, then that's kind of like a small little red flag. But anyway, if they're giving you a ton of work, a ton of tasks that you really uh, do not like to do, and it's really stressful stuff, and you've actually voiced out your opinion saying, hey, you you know, you would like to learn other things, but they're not working with you, then that's a big red flag. And like I said, this one can get a little confusing. So let me kind of give you an example. If you see that you're having, you basically work the jobs of two or three people. Let's say that you're uh, meeting deadlines, but then on top of that, you're doing renderings. And then on top of that, you know, you're working two projects, let's say. And then on top of that, you're also working the marketing for the firm. That is a really huge red flag because although it might be presented to you as 
the fact that you're learning and you're gaining all this experience, at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, what is it that you want to do in your journey? Do you want to be working on marketing for the rest of your life? And granted, I think that marketing is super important. It's a really important side of business that they don't teach in school, in architecture school, that is. But if that's not something that you're interested in, maybe you're only interested in rendering or maybe you're only interested in making 3D models, whatever it is. You have to really be aware of what's going on because sometimes these guys just like to give a lot of work to the employees that they have, uh, obviously, because they want to save money. They don't want to hire more people or maybe they can't. But like I said, I understand if that's the case, but there has to be that communication. So if you find that your manager or your boss is giving you a bunch of tasks that you're taking over, you're basically working for, the, you know, you basically have two to three jobs and you're only getting paid for one, you're not getting compensated any other way, then that is a huge, huge red flag. Now, another huge red flag is if your boss is not considerate of your time. What do I mean by this? If they make you feel guilty for taking time off or wanting to take time off, or they're constantly making you stay late or come in on weekends, this is a huge red flag. Now, here's the thing. It does happen sometimes that for whatever reason, you do have to stay later to finish a project to meet a deadline. This can happen. And if this does happen, a good boss will sit down with you, explain what happened and talk about how in the future you guys are going to figure out how to avoid this from happening because staying late is not the norm. It's something that happens every once in a while. And if it's happening a lot, it's a problem with time management, or the fact that your firm is making all these big promises to clients, telling them that they're going to get the work done faster than it should be done, which is a whole other conversation. But the point is that you shouldn't have to be dealing with this. And sometimes they will make you feel guilty telling you that, oh, you should be thankful that you have this job or, oh, you should be grateful that you're working here and you're learning. And they basically make themselves feel like they're the best firm in the world. And this is not the case. They're crappy as heck if they're making you constantly stay late or constantly come in on weekends for whatever reason. Like I, I can't stress enough how not normal this is. And so if you're at a firm where you're constantly having to devote a lot of your time and you, if you're not getting compensated, like that's a humongous red flag because at the very least, they should pay you some overtime, give you some bonus or treat you to lunch or something, you know, or whatever it is. However, the firm wants to deal with it, that's completely up to them. But um, if you see that you're constantly staying late at work, huge, huge, huge red flag. It doesn't help that professors in school tend to make you feel like that's going to be normal. Like they make you pull all these all nighters at school, preparing you for the workforce. But how crazy is that? Like that shouldn't ever be the case. You know, if you have to stay late every once in a while, okay, I get it. That happens, but it shouldn't be the norm. So I don't get why people fantasize over architecture being this thing where you're just working, 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 and you don't care about your friends or your family or anything. That should never be the case anywhere. Not, not school, not work. So so if this is the case for you, humongous, humongous red flag. All right, so you just checked off all these and probably even other some red flags that you've come up with, which by the way, if you do come up with other red flags, put it down in the comments. I want to see, I'm really curious to see what other red flags you guys are dealing with in your firm. And I'll probably make a video on these in the future. But anyway, um, if you checked a bunch of these off and you're thinking like, well, I guess I'm not in a place where I should be. Well, what do I do? Do I just get up and leave? I mean, let's talk about that for a second. This really kind of depends, okay? First of all, did you just get this job? Did you just leave school? Like, is this your first job basically, fresh out of school or during school? You might not wanna leave because your first job is like the hardest job to get because you just don't have any experience. You might be the best renderer in your class or you might make some really cool sketches. Like none of that matters at a firm. Like your value comes with other qualities, not necessarily those. So. I don't think that you should just get up and leave immediately. What I think you should do is start to look for other opportunities out there. And when you land another opportunity, then you leave. Also, something to keep in mind, it is possible that you have just entered this firm at a very crazy project deadline time for some reason. And so you're just, you know, you're getting like this crappy uh, experience from this firm. And it's not really the firm's fault because maybe they don't behave like this all the time, but you just happen to come in at the worst possible time. So that's why I give you the advice that maybe you should wait three to six months not to start looking, 
Always be on the lookout for other opportunities. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is don't leave just yet because it is possible that in three to six months, things might stabilize. So give it at least that amount of time before you just get up and quit because things might get better. Now, if you're someone that's probably on your second or third firm, you've been working for years and you just landed at a firm where you love everything else, but you know, you're just not getting along with your bosses. Then in that case, what I recommend that you do is talk to someone higher up. For example, if your project manager is the one that has these negative qualities, you can talk to their manager or even one of the partners, depending on the firm, and let them know what your concern is. Now, you don't have to tell them that your project manager is a jerk or whatever. You can just simply say, hey, I don't like the work that I'm doing with uh, X, Y, and Z manager. Is there any way that I could transfer to this other department? Now, if your firm is small and there's really no other departments, there's nothing else that you can do, then I can't blame you for wanting to leave. Obviously, if you've been working for years already, you can tell yourself if the firm that you're on at is not a good one. And so in that case, what I recommend is that the same thing that I recommended for someone that's fresh out, start looking always be on the lookout. Even if you got the, your dream job, you should just be on the lookout. And the way that you should be out on the lookout is using LinkedIn. Maybe you guys are not using LinkedIn, but I think LinkedIn is really cool because you can create a network from the comfort of your own home, right? What that means is that you could just start adding every day, just add five or 10 firms to uh, your connections list and add the, the owners of these firms, add some of their employees and then let them, you know, shoot the messages and be like, hey, um, I just wanted to add you because I'm in the same industry. I work for so-and-so and I just wanted to make the connection. And you're probably kind of nervous thinking about doing that, but I promise you um, in the field of architecture or in professional, in a professional environment in general, people are kind of wanting to grow their network. So if you reach out and they see that you're young and you're just trying to grow your network, it's gonna be something that's inviting. It's not gonna be something that they're gonna find you uh, as a weird person for or anything. Like, I, I think you should do this. And if you're having like, all of a sudden you're thinking, like you're feeling anxious because you're like, but what if my boss finds out that I'm adding all these people on LinkedIn? You know, I'm adding the competition on LinkedIn. What, what the heck, what are they gonna do? Well, that in itself, you just discovered one huge red flag, right? Because if my employees are out there trying to expand their network because they wanna um, get better in their career, and I am, I guess, jealous of that, or I feel like they're gonna leave me, then that's an issue that I have, not an issue that they have. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you're afraid of your boss finding out that you're putting things on LinkedIn, I wouldn't be afraid of that because if they confront you, if you're adding people on LinkedIn and they come up to you and they're like, hey, why'd you add all those people on LinkedIn? That right there is a huge red flag. Nobody should ever question you as to what, or make you feel bad or guilty as to why you're trying to grow your network. At the end of the day, architecture is about business. And the more people you know and the more people that know you, the better that your possibilities are gonna be in the career. So to kind of recap all that I've just said at the end right there is that if you do have one of these bosses that have all these negative qualities, then this firm is not the best firm in the world as they're trying to paint it. There are millions of opportunities out there, literally millions of opportunities, and you are an asset and you deserve the best for yourself. So don't ever let someone make you feel bad for wanting something better in your life. And also, don't stop networking and never stop looking for opportunities, even if you got your dream job.